Another way to make a shape inside After Effects is to copy a path from one of three Adobe programs, Illustrator, Fireworks, or Photoshop, and then paste that path into a shape layer inside After Effects. Now, a path is a vector-based shape. It's mathematically described so that if you zoom in or out on it, then you retain the quality of that path. It's very clearly defined. Now, Illustrator is a vector-based program, and an image like this would have many paths in it. It used to be that you'd have to copy those paths and paste those paths one at a time into After Effects to try to reproduce what you saw inside Illustrator. You don't have to do that anymore. In After Effects CS6, you can now convert an Illustrator file into a shape layer, retaining all of the paths inside that shape layer. It's pretty cool. I'm going to show you how to do that in the next lesson. So why bother with the paths then? Well, it's kind of nice to be able to copy a single path from a pixel-based image like this and use that to create a shape. And you can also use paths like this to morph shapes from one to another. So I'm going to show you how to do that here in this lesson. You can follow along. This little shape came from our Working Files folder. Right over here, go to File, Open. It came from the Photo Spin Assets folder. This is called the Fish Orange. I'm also going to bring in Hummingbird and Girls Jumping later on. There you go. So here's this little fish, and I want to be able to make a selection around this fish. It's very easy to do that when you've got transparency behind it. All I have to do is go to the Layers panel, and then Control or Command click on the thumbnail, and there you go. You've got the little marching ants around there to say you've made a selection. That is not a path. You need to convert that selection into a path. And you do that by going to the Paths panel. There you go. And going down to the bottom here to convert that selection into a working path or a work path. There it is. I'm going to copy that work path. Go Control C or Command C. Now I've copied that path. And just to show you that it's a path, I'm going to go Alt or Option, click on it, and there are all the vertices. If I click on the, let's say, Direct Select tool here, click away for a second, click on it again, you can see there's a vertex and there are the handles, just as you're going to see them when we bring this into After Effects. Okay, let's go to After Effects. I've got a comp open here, the typical HD comp, except this time I have a black background. That's because it's just a little bit easier to work with paths with a black background. I can see the vertices and the handles a little more easily. I want to create a shape layer. We need to have a shape layer into which we can paste that path. So I'm going to create a new shape layer down here by right-clicking, New Shape Layer. There you go. Now the shape layer is empty. If you look at contents, there isn't even a disclosure triangle there. There's nothing in the contents. It's waiting for you to put a shape inside it. I'm going to put a very simple shape inside it, which I'm going to replace in about five seconds. So I'm going to click on the pen tool here and just click there, and I've now made a shape. Notice all the stuff that shows up when I do that. Pretty wild. What I'm interested in, though, is just the path. When you create a shape with the pen tool, it creates a path, which is good because we want to be able to take a path from Photoshop and put it in here. So I'm now going to paste that path here with this path selected like that. Control V, Command V to do that. And there it is. There's our little fish right there with all the characteristics of that shape, which is great. And that's all there is to it, really. That's it. But what I want to do now is I want to have that fish morph to a bird. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop. And I have this little hummingbird here. I'm going to do the same routine I did before. I'm going to open up the Layers panel, Control or Command, click on the thumbnail to make a selection, go to Paths. Convert that selection into a work path by clicking down here. There we go. There's the work path. Copy that work path. Control C or Command C to copy it. Go back to After Effects. And now here's the little trick we need to do. I need to try on keyframes for the path property. So now I've made a keyframe for that fish. I want to move in a little ways, just a certain amount of time, whatever you want to do. Let's say three and a half seconds or so. Now I'm going to paste. Control or Command V. I'm going to paste the hummingbird. How cool is that? And now we can go from one to the other. Morphing from the fish. To the hummingbird. I can make it a little bit larger by going down the transform here and increasing its scale. That increases it for both of them equally because it is one layer. Now you notice how it kind of turns in on itself when it makes this little morph. There's a way to kind of fix that. It almost always works, but sometimes it doesn't. What I want to do is I want to change what's called the first vertex. So the first vertex on the fish matches the general location of the first vertex on the bird. And usually a good idea in this case is to put the first vertex on the nose of both of the animals to have it kind of be consistent since that's the upper left hand side of both of them. So let me show you how to find the first vertex. I'm going to make sure that the current time indicator is right there on top of that because I don't want to add another keyframe when I change the first vertex. When you look at the path like this, you can spot the first vertex. It's that one with the box around it there. I don't want that to be the first vertex. If I look at the next one here at the bird, the first vertex is down here by its feet. I want to be able to have them in a consistent place. I'm going to go back to the first one here, make sure we're on top of that keyframe. I want to put the first vertex right there on its nose. I'm going to zoom in a bit so I can see a little better. Go Control plus, Command plus. 
hold down my space bar to move this thing over a little bit. I want to turn this vertex into the first vertex. I need to select it. Now all these guys are selected. I need to select just that one. So I go to my selection tool. It's kind of tricky because sometimes you move the whole image when you do this. So I'm going to marquee select that guy. There you go. Now it's the only one selected. All the rest of the guys are hollow, if you can see that. It's solid, which means it's selected. I'm going to right click on that vertex. This is kind of hard to find. It's under Mask and Shape Path, Set First Vertex. So now it's the first vertex. It has a box around it. Now let's navigate to the next keyframe. There you go. And that vertex was down by its feet. But I don't need to go down there. I need to go up by its nose. So I'm going to use my hand tool to pull this thing down. There it is. I want to put the first vertex here. And I think this might be a problem because I'm pretty sure that vertex is broken. See how sharp an angle it is there? It might be a broken vertex. I'm going to try to select it like that. Right click on it, and I can pretty well tell this broken by those two handles there. So this may not work. I'll right click on it and say, no, nope, it's grayed out. So that's not a good thing. I can't select it because it's broken like that. But I'll select the next one over like this. Notice how I moved it. It's kind of tricky to select it. I go back up here and select just path like that. Now I should be able to drag a marquee around it. There we go. Now it's selected, and it has regular handles. So right click on that, and I'll say that's the first vertex. There we go. Now I'm going to zoom back out by going shift forward slash to be able to see everything. Press the home key to go to the beginning. I'm going to click away so we don't see all these boxes. And we'll see how that little morph goes. Much better. Nice. OK. All right. Now, if you really want to have a fine-tuned morph, there's one more thing you can do. But you can't do it in the shape layer. You need to do it with a mask, which seems kind of bizarre. But we're going to use this thing called mask interpolation and then use that on these keyframes here. So I'm going to make a new solid layer. New solid, like that. And I want to put a mask on this and then have the mask follow those morphing animals. And then we'll convert those guys back to the shape. It's kind of convoluted, but I do want to show you this little process. So I'm just going to take the shape tool here. And when I draw a shape on an existing solid, it turns it into what's called a mask. I just want to put it there for a placeholder. I'm going to go down to my shape layer, go to the path and select it. And when I do that, I select both of these keyframes. Copy those guys, Control C. Go up to this new solid layer, click on the mask path there, put the current time indicator to the beginning. I'm going to take this mask path and use those keyframes on it by going Control or Command V. And that now creates a mask that morphs. Looks very much like a shape, right? But it's considered a mask. And now I want it to morph a little bit more smoothly. And to do that, I use mask interpolation. So I select both of those keyframes. They're both selected because they're yellow. I'm just going to do one little thing in mask interpolation. When you look at mask interpolation, it'll probably say matching method auto. If you change the polyline, it tends to make a nice smooth transition from the first keyframe to the last. I click on apply. It puts all these keyframes in between here. Let's watch that little change there. Look at all the keyframes it added to make for a smoother transition. So now I can copy those keyframes. I know this is convoluted, but I can copy those keyframes. Control or Command C to copy them. Go back down to the shape. Let me turn this guy off so you don't have to see that anymore. Go back down to the shape. Click that. Turn off this little wireframe there. I'm going to take these keyframes here that are already there and just delete them, just in case they kind of get in the way. Put this guy back to the beginning like that. And do Control or Command V. And there are those keyframes we just copied. And this will be a smoother transition now than before even. And if I want to spread this transition out a bit, with all those keyframes selected, I can alter option click on the last one there and just drag them out a little bit. That lets me spread out the motion here, have it last a little bit longer. So how cool is that? All right, I want to show you one more thing back in Photoshop just to show you kind of a little caveat. And I have this path already made here on the girl on the left. When I made the selection to create the path, I wanted to make sure I selected only her, so I deselected the sky there. But in doing that, when I turn it into a path, that actually creates two paths. And that creates a little bit of a complexity when you bring that into After Effects. It's almost always best to work with only one path. So let me show you what happens here. I'm going to copy this by making sure it's active and then going Control or Command C to copy it. Going back to After Effects. All right, I want to paste that path here into this shape layer. I'm going to go a little bit past the end of the bird there and I'm going to paste it right there. So Control or Command V, and I've pasted it. And what happened? Well, what happened was since there are two paths, one path is pasted here, and the other path is turned into what's called a mask. And that's the mask. So the mask is masking out everything else and only showing that little bit of what was the sky back there in the picture. 
So when you have more than one path, one path is converted to this path, the other path is converted to a mask. Not necessarily what you want. I'm going to take this mask here and delete it. That lets us see the girl. Let me just change the size because she's taking on the size of that layer, which we then blew up quite a bit. Let me get on here to position and scale. Let's take scale down there like that. And there she is. And that little mask would have been right there, but we really can't have two paths when we're trying to create one shape like this. It does get a little messy. So just a caveat, when you make a selection inside Photoshop and you want to convert it to a path, try to make just a single selection that turns into a single path. It'll simplify your life when you paste that path into After Effects.